good in this session today about SOLIDWORKS basics modeling what we are going to do is to explore tools and features which are available in SOLIDWORKS program we are going to do some basic 2d sketching I'm going to show uh, how to use them how to use them for making different types of diagrams 2d sketching it is similar to what you have learned in AutoCAD software then we will move to 3d modeling which is how to make the parts in 3d three dimensions and after that there is certain evaluation techniques which I'm going to show and share with you and lastly we are going to touch on how to generate 3d drawings from uh, 3d engineering uh, 2d engineering drawings from the parts which you have created already okay so let's jump in if you want to work with me you can um, you can uh, if you want to work together with me it's better to um, open the SOLIDWORKS but mainly I, what I'm going to do is I'm going to share a tutorial of this as well so a video tutorial will help you uh, follow the steps uh, easily so uh, let's jump in uh, if you know uh, how to open Citrix SOLIDWORKS through Citrix it's good if you doesn't know there's an online tutorial available on Blackboard for this so let's uh, go in directly for this and the first thing which uh, we are going to do is to explore SOLIDWORKS. What is the environment of SOLIDWORKS? So let me make this smaller here a little bit so you can see SOLIDWORKS more. And here uh, you can see I will click on file and I will click on new. So SOLIDWORKS software uh, will give me option in this point. Which, uh, what thing I want to model? A part, an assembly or a drawing? Assembly is a uh, multiple parts joined together uh, and then part is only single part and then drawing is the 2d drawing which is um, the just like AutoCAD with title block and everything so this is uh, something which is there now what we are going to do now I have uh, we are going to click on part and click on ok which will take us to the which will take us to the uh, to the part mode, uh, which is uh, in this one we can start making the simple models of the part. Here, uh, what I uh, addressing the question from Muhammad Shafi, even the SolidWorks without Citrix is slow, so it doesn't matter. You can see how long it's taking for me to open this up. So you have to bear with this, and yes, um, it is taking time to open. Yes, it's true. So once my program opens. Uh, I'm going to share with you uh, what are the menus available here. So the menus available I have are first is the main menu. It's just like Microsoft Word. I have file, I have edit, I have view, many things. This is the main menu and from here mainly you can use the saving and opening features. The next me me uh, important menu is the command manager. This is the command manager ribbon here. Uh, the the one next to main menu and this command menu is basically the features which are you are going to use in either sketching or 3d mode and after that here in the command menu there's many modes this is in the feature mode we will do the 3d modeling in the sketching mode we will do the 2d modeling in the evaluate we can test our designs by certain ways or check the different properties of it so command menu is also a very important menu here the next is the features manager design tree. I will say this design tree is your baseline and it's your uh, safe line. Without design tree, uh, you will lose track of what you are doing. So design tree is this ribbon here. And here you have uh, whatever the commands you use to make your model. It makes a history of uh, what designs you have followed. So if you have made three sketches they will appear here if you have used three different features they will also appear here and using this design tree you can edit your model and go back to it and uh, replace it make it better so design tree is your right hand in modeling and most of the modeling softwares not only SOLIDWORKS have this design tree and basically the user environment works uh, around the same way as in SOLIDWORKS so once you learn this software you will be able to have good command on other softwares as well in addition, you have this view display menu. So here you can change different views. It's in the center here. And uh, I will show you how to move and move around with the views later on. 
and the, another thing is mouse clicking if it is very good to have a mouse with the scroller so i'm here showing you on my video this is the scroll wheel so if you have a mouse with a scroll wheel that's actually a added benefit it should be like this when you're using a cad software because scrolling is actually used for zooming in and zooming out and several other features so uh, any questions about the user environment so far or we can proceed to the next thing which is about uh, sketching which is the 2d sketching mode uh, we will also touch on where are the commands and where are the tools while we are doing this so i'll come back to some of them like how to use different views we'll come back to it when we have 3d model available this center screen here is where the model will be made so shall we start let's get started with the first model we have okay good so i have here uh, we are going to make a simple very simple model here so uh, first thing before doing anything is to select the units in which you are working so i have here my units selection if you can see on the lower right corner here uh, it says mks which is meters kilogram and seconds i will click this open and i can choose from different unit systems available in solidworks i can also create my custom units which is given here so um, let me choose at this point centimeters because manageable i'll use centimeters uh, as my unit system now you can see the software has changed the unit system to centimeters and we will start making our first sketch so in the 2d sketching mode the first thing you should do is to choose from uh, the planes available planes if you can see here i have my front plane in this direction i have my top plane in this direction and the right plane on this direction if i select all three of them you can see how they are oriented in x y and z axis so let's choose the front plane at this point well how how can i initiate the sketch is i will right click yes it's the first option i will right click on the front plane and i will click on the sketch option which is an icon by a pencil here given so let me do it again right click on the front plane and click on sketch once i click on the sketch you can see how the front plane came in front of me at 90 degrees yani normal to me i can see the front plane just like a paper in front of me and in the middle of the front plane there is an origin you can see the origin is red color pointers which are given in x and y direction in this plane and uh, it is very advisable to have your sketch centered around the origin always so it, it helps you move and create objects much easily so what i'm going to make right now is just a simple box so uh, before moving on let me show you here that my command uh, man uh, command menu has already moved to sketching because uh, in order to have a 3d model you have to have first a sketch so the first sketch which i have here is uh let me choose from the circle so here if i choose a circle i might be able to draw a circle around the origin but it's uh, as i said it's very good to have it centered around the origin so if i bring my mouse closer to origin you can see and uh, it already snaps to origin and here i draw a circle easy now how do i delete it i have to check ok to the circle command so the, i finish the circle command i move out of it and uh, i can highlight it just like on my uh, paint and uh, simple uh, cad software and then i will press the delete button on my keyboard to have it deleted so simple also you can notice that on my design tree uh, the sketch one appeared and it, there is a traffic signal here which means it's not finalized yet so sketch one is the first one which i'm making again i can show you the line command the line command is the same as it was in autocad so i'll click on line here and i can draw a line from origin and you can see it's a horizontal line it's a vertical line and that's how uh, it is already guiding me to origin before clicking so i can move further away from it or i can use the same guide as this as the solidworks is showing me and close it to make a square and but there is a, a again i can select it all like this and press the delete command 
and it deletes. Let's make a proper square from which we can make a 3D model right now. So if I open the rectangle option, there is many options. Corner rectangle, center rectangle, three point corner rectangle. What I will do is I will choose a center rectangle, which is here. And I will draw a center rectangle in the origin like this. And click OK. You can see the rectangle is nicely centered in the origin. And this is exactly the command which I needed at this point. So after making a basic sketch, it is very important to give it dimensions because the size, if there is no size, the software doesn't know how, how big is this. So how to give dimensions? Once you make a rectangle, you have to check this green arrow. So you close the rectangle command and go to the smart dimensioning option here, which is also in the sketching. So smart dimension. If I click smart dimension, I can come over my mouse over to this line, click on this one and it will give me an automatic dimension here. This dimension is, reads about 7.12. Let's make it simple. If I click here, it will give me uh, a, a dialog a box to enter my dimension. So I will type 10, which is 10. And my default units are centimeters. So it should take 10 centimeter size. And press this green arrow. And you can see my square has become 10. Now let's make it exactly a square and make this top dimension also 10. So I will click on this line and move away a little bit and click again to give it again. Now this was 13. Instead of 13, I will write again 10 and click the green arrow, which will give me a square of 10 by 10. Now, guys, I want you to notice something. This square, can you no see? Okay. Before even noticing that, let me go out of the dimensioning command by clicking the green arrow, which means I accept what the dimensions I give you. So if I click the green arrow. Now, can you notice my sketch has turned black? Now, uh, this, uh, uh, this black sketch means that the sketch is fully defined. It means um, I have the sketch cannot be moved because it is anchored to origin and also the sketch cannot be altered so if i try to press my click here and try to move this point it's not moving why because it is fixed by a dimension uh, from the origin so having a fully defined dimension and the sketch is very important in the 3d modeling it says here it's uh, not movable fully defined sketch means it's not movable so using dimensions you can make anything fully defined Fully defined means again, I repeat, it is have all the dimensions so, so it, its size doesn't change and its location doesn't change. So it's a simple square. Let's move out from the sketching option. If I go on my right here, I can see here a blue uh, pencil and a red cross. If I click the red cross, it means I discard all the changes in sketch and I exit. And if I click the green, uh, sorry, the blue one and the purple arrow, it means I accept what I draw and I exit the sketch. So this is what I want to do right now. So I accept and I exit the changes. Now my sketch one is already made and now you can see it has become blue, which means we, or gray, which, which, I, which means I came out of my sketching command. So you can notice here on the left side on design three that the sketch one is here. Now, what's the next thing? Editing a sketch. For example, uh, before moving on to the 3D modeling, let, let us also look into how to edit the sketches. So if I want to edit this sketch one, how can I do it? Uh, yes, Ahmed Damri, you have uh, a question? No, I don't think so. Okay. Uh, who else? Any? Okay. So how do I edit the sketch? So for example, at this point, I remembered. Now I want to make this not 10 by 10, but I wanted to make it uh, 12 by 12 centimeters. Uh, so uh, 12 by 12 uh, how do I do it I have to edit my previous sketch so once you are out of the sketch you have to go back into the sketch one by right clicking on the sketch one and click on edit sketch okay edit sketch uh, click on the edit sketch and it will take me back into my sketch now, if I delete this dimension, you can notice here, if I click here on the dimension and I press on delete button, you can notice two of my lines became blue, which means what? 
it means my sketch is not fully defined and I can move it. So if I click on this line and I try to move it, you can see um, it is, has changed its size because I tried to move it. Once again, if I try to move it, I am actually changing its size. This means it's not fully defined. I can make it smaller, I can make it bigger. What I want is it should not be movable. So I will again give it smart dimension and click on this horizontal line and make it 12 because we wanted to edit it back to 12 by 12 square so uh, once the dimension appears i will give it 12 and click on the green arrow so my top edge of the square becomes 12 centimeter now let's edit this 10 and make it 12 also so now i make it 12 by 12 square and now if you accept these changes this is 12 by 12 square Click on the exit uh, sketch button here on the blue one. Now I came out of my sketch after I click this button and my sketch is 12 by 12. Again, if you want to make it uh, 15 by 15, you can right click the sketch one and edit to 15 by 15. That's how we edit the sketches. Now, moving on to next big chapter, which is 3D modeling. Now, in order to go for 3D modeling, you have to go in the command before we were in sketching. Now we will move to features command, which is here, features. Features are all the features you need for 3D modeling of your, uh, of your uh, uh, object. So in the features, the first and the most important feature I have is called extrude boss, which is given here, the first one. What does extrude boss means? Extrude boss means is adding material to a sketch, which means making it in three dimension. So if I click on extrude boss, it will ask me, what do you want to extrude? So it here, select a plane on which the sketch or feature cross-section. So select the sketch which you want to make 3D. So what I will do is I will just simply go here and click on its edge. This is one option. Or another option is you, if you can notice my tree has moved here. If I click on this small plus button. Okay. If I click on this button, plus button here, uh, I can see my sketch one. I can select the sketch one from here also. So it selects the whole sketch or I can select the edge and it will select this sketch automatically. So you, anyone you can try. So let me select the edge and the, it has extrude boss, extruded boss the, the square. So you can see there is a 3D depth coming up in yellow color and it is by one centimeter. So since we want to make a perfect square, let's make it also how much? 12 centimeters. So my side was 12. And then another side was 12 and then now the depth should be also 12 centimeters so i will write 12 and click um, and press enter you can see there is a cube mm -hmm. here now i uh, can you notice that i cannot see it properly so here i will show you how to change your views and uh, look at uh, see it properly but before let's make this cube and check the green button so it means you accept that yes i I want to add this depth, so I'll click the green button. <clears throat> I have, after clicking this, <clears throat> I should have a 3D square. But I cannot see it properly because it's not oriented properly. So here we need to use the view command. So how to bring about the view command is you need to pu push the space bar on your keyboard. If I push the space bar on my keyboard, I have these options of view orientation. If I click on, if I check this one, it says top view. What will be a top view of my square? It's a square. And again, if I press the space bar, I can see the front view, which is also a square. Again, a space bar. I have the right view. I have the back view. And on this corner here, I have the isometric view. If I click the isometric view, I can see the square nicely centered in my screen. Okay, that's how we play with the views. Another way you can do it is through your mouse scroller wheel. If I scroll in, it will uh, zoom. It is zooming in and zooming out. And wherever I put my mouse pointer, it will zoom in and zoom out there. So if I put my mouse pointer here, I am zooming in to this edge using my scroller wheel on the mouse. Okay, so that's how you use the mouse. So for example, I, I made my view like this. Now I want to pan it left and right. How do you do it? You have to uh, press the control button and click on your scroll wheel 
and use the mouse to move it left and right. It takes a bit of practice to learn it, uh, but you have to do it uh, by your practice using the mouse to zoom in and zoom out. But in any way, if you click on your scroller, uh, scroller wheel, so this scroll wheel is not just up and down, but it's also clickable. So if I click it and I try to move it, I can rotate my view. Once, once any any in any direction, if you if you if you mess up in with your view, what you can do is always press the space bar and click on isometric to bring it back to the location you want to see it properly. Okay, good. That's how we play with the views. Now uh, another thing which I want to show you is uh, this extrude boss and extrude, and this if I uh, if I want to do it. We did it on the front plane. The first sketch we made was on the front plane. In addition to that, how we can do it is uh, okay. How we can uh, develop it further. So, if what if I want on my cube to have uh, a circular uh, a circular cylinder here? How can I make it? So, what I will do is I will just click on the top face and I will click on the sketching I will go back to sketching sketch and I will choose circle so if I choose a circle here what I will do is I will make a circular sketch on the top of my square you want to try okay let's try it so click on the square here on the top you can see the blue may uh, uh, blue color denotes the selection so now I want to make a sketch on this surface how I'll do it I will just go to sketch and I will go to this circle now if I bring my mouse here I can draw a circle here anywhere but in order to draw it properly I need to see it in front of me just like when the front plane came in front of you so how do I do it I will press the space bar and here I have a view option which is called normal 2 if I click this this face will come in front of me and I can see this face normal to me now I can make a circle properly so let's say I want to make a circle exactly in the center of this uh, square how do I do it I will draw a circle I hope you can see it because it's blue on blue if I draw this circle here the uh, now I, I want to make it in the center of this square how do I do it using smart dimension so go on the top uh, here I have smart dimension option click here the first thing is to give a, a diameter to this circle. So I will click on the circle edge and I will give it a diameter. You can give it inside, you can give it outside once you are happy with any location. So click, it says 2.9. So let's make a circle of uh, radius 5 centimeters. So press 5 and click OK. I have a circle of uh, 5 centimeters here, but it is slightly towards the left of the square I want it exactly in the center so how do I do it I will click on uh, again the smart dimension is active in case it's not active you will go to smart dimension and you will click on the circle here on the edge and the next thing you have to do is you have to click on the side edge of the square so I have two areas from where I can give the dimension so I once I click on both of them I can see there is a 9 uh, centimeter threads here so I will click here instead of 9 how much it should be it should be half of 12 because my edge is 12 centimeters so it is 6 you can also write here half of 12 so 12 divided by 2 if you press enter it will become 6 uh, you can see here it became 6 now also this circle needs to have a dimension from circle to this edge so again the smart dimension is active already so what I will do is I will click on the circle once and then the, my second click is on the side edge and my third click is over here so I can place this dimension here now I have 8 here I will change it to 6 to also make it in the center and let's hope my circle becomes fully black after this Yes, you can see my sketch is fully black, which means the sketch is fully defined. So I am happy with dimensions. I will close the dimensioning option. And this is my next sketch. If you want this, now you can play with your views anytime. So I can zoom in, zoom out, play with my dimensions, put it, place it here. 
and I can also view it isometrically. So let me view it isometrically. I will press the space bar and then I will go to isometric. Yes, can you see? The same sketch can also be made in the same view as isometric as this, but it is difficult. Sometimes it's better to have it normal to you. So you can have your sketch normal to you by pressing the space bar and click on normal to option here. And you can have it isometric when by pressing the space bar and clicking on isometric option. Let's keep it an isometric because we want to make it in 3D right now. So after you are happy with the sketch, you can exit the sketch by this option. The same as before. Now I can see on my design tree that I have sketch 2 also this time. Before I had sketch 1. But where did the sketch 1 go? The sketch 1 is actually inside this boss option. So if you click this plus button, I can see my sketch 1. It is hidden. This is actually the sketch 1 which we made before. Once you use the boss option, they hide the software hi automatically hides the sketch. So it's easier to see your model. But since we did not use the boss on sketch 2, it is not hidden. It's actually visible here by gray color. So it's easier to select. So now uh, if you can go to features option here, features, and again we will use which option? Boss extrude, which is adding material. So I will choose the boss extrude. He will ask me which sketch do you want to select. I will go to this circle and select its edge. And the software selects the circle to make it extrude and give it some thickness or depth now it's giving automatically 12 because we gave 12 before now instead of 12 i will make it two centimeters to see it properly yeah two centimeters so this is the extrusion happening two centimeters here and accept this and this is now the second feature which you used so boss extrude 2 appears here and if i open this boss extrude on my design 3 you can see the sketch 2 is actually hidden inside this. Uh, uh, now inside this one I have uh, boss extrude 1 and boss extrude 2 and sketch 2 is available. Now um, I have two extrusions. One is this box, the other is this one. The second most important command in SOLIDWORKS is the extrude cut which is how to cut the material inside. Now if I want to make a hole on this edge which is this one how do I do it? It's the same way. You will select this edge, you will go to sketching option, you will make a circle on this edge and it will extrude cut inside. Like extrude boss here, there is an option here called extrude cut. You can see it in, in the mouse highlighting where I am pointing, extrude cut. Now in order to use extrude cut, you need to have a sketch so he software knows how much you should cut. So let's go to sketch option here and I want to extrude cut here four holes so let's do it I will click on this face I will click on sketch option and in the sketch I will choose circle now in order to make four circles here properly equally spaced we need to make this view in front of us how we will do it you will press the space bar and click on normal to here we see it in front of us here if I want to make four circles I will make the first one I'll make the second one, I'll make the third one, and the fourth one. This is just for, to show you how I'm using this. And let's make a triangle in the center also. So let me make a triangle by line command. Okay, this is the circle command, so I will cancel it. I will use the line command here, line, and I will draw a simple rectangle. So one line is here, one line is here and one line is here so it is not symmetrical i know but we just drew it in order to make all these uh, items symmetrical and proper we have to give it dimensions so let me just give a basic dimension so in order to show you uh, so if i click on smart dimension i can uh, go to my circle and give it dimension but let's to, to show you extrude cut command let's just skip that and then I will just place them randomly because now I don't have dimension I can move my sketches so let me place them here I will place this one on this corner let me place this one on this corner and this circle on this corner uh, okay the triangle is roughly in the middle and it is roughly symmetric so once I have this sketch, 
I will just go to my isometric view and here let's go to now the cutting feature which is features I will go to features and there is an option called extruded cut extruded cut will cut the material inside this so since my sketch is there I, I forgot to exit my sketch so now let me exit the sketch and once I exit the sketch I have sketch 3 on my design 3 so let's go to extrude cut and he will ask me which sketch do you want to cut so I can see my sketch here but if in order to select all of the sketch here let's go to the design 3 open this one because the design 3 now moved here and click on sketch 3 you can see now after I choose the sketch 3 that the software is cutting inside by 2 cm you can increase this depth by 3, 4, 5 and up to the 12 where you are actually cutting and making a hole through all of the object if you can see from a little bit side you can see it's cutting through all and just click on the green arrow and you will see that our box which we made have some cuts inside uh, once it's open yes it's done now how can I see it's through all if I click on spacebar and go to my right view you can see the box has the holes here so using this adding material and removing material approach you can make any object you can make a table you can make a glass you can make a chair anything it's just adding and removing adding and removing and then there are certain advanced features which are also given here which I want you to explore on your own another one simple advanced feature which I will show you is called fillet so if you go to fillet and uh, so one basic thing if you want to do anything with the 3d model the commands you will find in the features so now that we have the 3d model here let me just put it in isometric view okay we have a 3d model here we can play with its more and making design better smooth on the edges so you can see the edges of my square are very sharp I can make them smooth by using fillet command so fillet command is here click on fillet and it will ask you which edge do you want to fill it or which face you want to fill it so here items to fill it if I click on this blue button I can go to this edge if I click this edge you can see this edge will have a fillet of one centimeter and uh, if you click on this edge it will also be selected and then I have two edges here in the selection if you want to do it uh, let me click on full preview it will show me that it will fill it both of them now you can go edge by edge let me show you so if I click OK you can see the square has become smooth from the top after the, edge, uh, the fillet command you can see the square has become smooth from here and from here but what if I if you want on the bottom all the edges to be smooth it is you can select one by one all the edges or you can select the face and it will edge make smooth all the edges related to it so let's try that fill it and in the fillet option uh, instead of here selecting the edge I will select this face so once I select the face I can see the whole face is being filleted and I can see that this fillet is actually going in this circle so let's make this fillet a little bit smaller so I will make it instead of 1 0 0.5 centimeter and press enter the fillet size became smaller but you can see since we selected the face so it has it is making fillet on all the face here click OK and uh, let's see this time that after I click OK for filleting on the whole face all the edges are filleted you can see here so let me come back to isometric view so that's how you can use the fillet feature to make the object smooth to touch so in, in if in case you are making a hand tool you how you can make the edges smooth by using fillet command in addition to fillet command there is another option called chamfer command the chamfer is just similar to fillet but the cutting is not round but it's a straight cut so uh, like you use in your manufacturing processes all the commands here are similar to them again we have many other features linear pattern rib draft shell mirror wrap also we have whole wizard we have sweep we have loft round base so all those advanced features I want you to explore and play around with the software and find it on your own and uh, it will help you learn the software better it's just like you practice with it more to get better at it okay
So uh, fillet and chamfer are some of the options which I showed you. The next thing is I want to uh, show you how to change the appearance of your object. You can make it a different color because maybe you will want to represent it in a different way. If you want to color it differently, for example, let's say we want to color the whole object yellow. How we will do it? I will right click on my part one here. So my part one on the design three here, it says uh, right click on the part one. And here I have a appearance option, which is the second option. If I click this, it will ask me, you want to uh, make the change the appearance of part one? You can select this thing. And here it will, if you click on part one, it will give you options. So click here and click on part one. okay and it should be showing me different color patterns for which i want to select yes it takes some time to open so once it opens yes it shows me which colors do you want to select so let me just choose yellow and click the green button now the whole path has become yellow color now if i want to make this face only the first circular face and its cylinder uh, the si side uh, sides of this a different color how I can do it I can right click on this face and I can choose again the appearance option from the menu directly here and then here he will uh, give me option you want to color this face or you want to color the whole feature which is boss extrude or the whole body or the whole path I will choose the face option and then in the face option I can he will give me again a selection of different colors available and I can choose from those color a different color here again on my left I can see different colors let me choose this time a blue color and click OK so this face has changed its color that's how you can apply color and change your appearance of your path at different faces at different edges at different features or the whole path and it's in itself okay once you have this the next and the last thing in the 3d modeling is to apply the material to your object for example you want to make this box out of aluminum how will you do it there is on the design tree option called material and it says not specified if you right click on this material and click on the first option which is saying edit material click on this one you will see that I have a big selection of materials available in SOLIDWORKS so I have options of steel, iron, aluminum, copper, I have plastics, I have wood, rubber so let's go to aluminum alloys and let's choose the first one aluminum alloy it has the properties given here for modulus, shear modulus, Poisson ratio, many things so just choose aluminum alloy click apply and close this so you can see that my path has taken the appearance of aluminum or something similar to aluminum and it says in the material 1060 alloy so that's how you apply the material why did I apply the material so in order to know how much the weight of my object how can I check the weight of my object you have to go to evaluation mode which is the next thing which you are going to do so let me scroll down this in the evaluation mode uh, you can measure the length of your object as well as the weight of it and other mass properties uh, I will show you again how to edit the material so in case you are not happy with aluminum we can change it back to steel uh, I'll show you again after we see the mass and the weight of this object first so in order to see that you have to click on evaluate button here so evaluate so this this is now another feature before we were using sketch features now we will go to evaluate there is many other but they are not related to you so click on evaluate and in the evaluation I have measure and I have mass properties so if I click on mass properties it will give me an information window on what is the mass of my object so if I see this the mass reads out to be 4278 grams approximately so this is with aluminum as material and there is certain other properties like volume, density, uh, moment of inertia and many other options which you can help to calculate. So I will close this and let's go back to the material option here. This is the material option. If I can right click on this alloy, uh, uh, this uh, whole thing is one path. 
so that's why the material will be applied to all of it not one uh, selection because you are making a part in order to have different materials you have to create different parts because we are in the part mode not in the assembly mode so the material will be applied to the whole thing yes the color can be applied to different things but the material will be applied to the whole thing so right click on this and click on edit material and now this time let's choose a steel as a material so i'll go close the aluminum and go to steel let me choose uh, here stainless steel which is here down here click apply and click close you can see my material has changed and then let's go to mass properties this time uh, uh, and i have the mass as 1000 uh, 12360 so you can see the mass is increased because we have used the steel this time aluminum is lighter that's how you can cha uh, check the mass of your object so addressing uh, uh, your question which you have raised if you want to create a part of different objects you have to create different parts and then join them together in assembly mode which will be your lab 2 your lab 1 is uh, today's is about only part model so one part can only be one uh, material that's why if you want to have different materials joined together it is in assembly mode so you, in, how do you do assembly mode this later subject okay so coming back to this uh, material is applied and now what i want to show you is uh, how do i edit something for example uh, if i want to increase this cylinder's height because this was extruded by only two centimeter if i want to edit this i what i will do is i will go to this extrusion command so i have boss extrude 2 which is about this small cylinder on the top boss extrude 1 was about the whole square cutting was about this so if i want to <clears throat> make it this cylinder that extrude 2 a little bit bigger how i will do it i will right click on my extrude and i will click on edit feature if I click this edit feature, I will be given going. I will go back to my uh, option where I can give it a different thickness. So instead of two this time, I'll make it four centimeters. So this cylinder becomes bigger, and then click on the green arrow, and it will become bigger. <coughs> That's how I edit my feature. Now you can see the cylinder is a little bit bigger. If you want to make the diameter of this cylinder a little bit bigger how what you will edit you will edit the sketch of this feature not the feature itself so if I, I edit the feature to give it more thickness but in order to increase the diameter which was five centimeter before let's make it seven i have to edit the sketch for it so click on the sketch to right click and click on, they will have the option called edit sketch so click on edit sketch here i will give uh, i'll have an option you can go to this dimension where we give the circle and double click this one and i will have uh, instead of five diameter i will give it seven and click the green arrow you will have the circle bigger one and click on the exit sketch button and you will see the whole cylinder will be uh, automatically updated Yes, you can see the cylinder is bigger. So using the editing sketch and the editing feature option, you can always um, go back and make your model different and make it bigger and smaller and as you like to make your editing. Okay, so one uh, thing I want to ask you also is uh, the last thing which we will be doing is... Uh, so guys let's start with the engineering drawing mode after this so once you have made your 3d model uh, the next thing which i want first thing which i want you to do is to go to file and click on save as because you need to save your model before doing anything and in the save as option you uh, what it's a good practice to save everything in one uh, folder so i will go to my desktop and i will create a new folder in the new folder i will just write solidworks lab one underscore practice so i know my files will be stored in one folder because the software can generate multiple files from uh, your single file uh, support files so that's why it's better to create a folder and then save your practice part so i will write practice underscore box because this is what we made so my practice box will be saved in this folder 
once it's saved there i want you to uh, verify that is it actually there or not so on my desktop i can see i have the folder and if i open this i can see that the practice box file is there so good i am good all good there let's go to engineering drawing mode so in the engineering drawing mode how you will start it you will click on file and you will see an option here called make drawing from path so this option will initiate engineering drawing mode so click on make drawing from path and you will see the software will go from the 2d uh, so 3d drawing path modeling to engineering drawing modeling mode and uh, once you have that screen you have the option to choose different options so first thing i have to choose is to choose my sheet size i usually go for a3 or a4 uh, because this is usually the size which is suitable but it depends on the path which you are making so if i choose a4 iso as my sheet size and click ok it's just like engineering graphics using autocad uh, you can do the similar thing here also so in the engineering drawing mode we will see is that I have uh, it is loading the path which we made so in the center I have the screen and here I have in the center the sheet which is where the views should be and on my right side I have different views if you want to import the first view what I will do is I will click on the isometric view and drag it inside my sheet and place it here so you can see my isometric view automatically came to the sheet the engineering drawing mode has two um, and on my left I have different options these options are related to the size and how if you want to show your hidden lines or not on which scale do you want to show it for I will explain this later to you but let's click on ok and I have my first view here but where are my top view right view front view um, uh, this is what we will address right now so uh, once I have my first view here I will show uh, there is two view modes you can work with first mode is the sheet mode and the second mode is the is the drawing mode so here I have the sheet for on my left in the design tree option if you open the sheet format right click the sheet format and click uh, or double click the sheet format you will go into editing the sheet formatting mode where you can write the options in the title block so if I zoom in the title block you can see here I have drawing number as my part name so let me just double click the practice box and it will allow me to edit this to any uh, uh, name which I like okay so uh, let me double click the practice box uh, and you can type in any name so uh, so this title block option says drawing number so drawing number i will just write here one two three and then in the title if i click in the center of the title i will see uh, a, a box where i can type so double click the title also and you can write the name there so i will double click the title and here i can write my part name which is practice box okay and once I'm happy with this, I will click on green button and it's done. Practice box is done. There is several other options here also like sheet size, which is A4. And I have here uh, different other options like drawn by, write your student name here, checked by some hard, approved by another guy. So these options and the material should be stainless steel or alloy, aluminium alloy, anything. So this information which you will put in the title block, I will press the space bar. Uh, which information you will put in the uh, title block is about the drawing or the path information if we want to go back to the sheet mode uh, exit this one exit the sheet editing mode click on this arrow here and you will exit the sheet mode here we will come back to our views now in the beginning we just brought the isometric view but we need that front back and uh, the right view for giving it proper dimensions so click on uh, here I have options the first option here in the menu command menu is the view layout if you click view layout and here you can see there is three standard views option click on this three standard views and here it will ask you is it about the practice box which you want to bring the views for you have to click the green arrow and here I will see 
the three standard views are already there this is the front view front view he take it this way and the top view and the right view and if you can move you can move the views around as you like to make it adjustable for you so i can see here if you can see that the views he brought are scaled up so if i click any of them and and see its information on the left side it says here that is using the scale of one ratio two which means anything is making it double so <clears throat> if you like it you can keep it like this if you want to reduce the scale you can use it uh, custom scale you can click on this and click on one by one and one by one view you can see it's uh, a little bit larger so it will not fit our a4 sheet so it's better to use the sheet scale which is what uh, the sheet is already scaled to one by five and the custom scale or the parent scale is depends on the isometric view which we brought or uh, which is more suitable so software will calculate so one by two is i think suitable scale click ok once you have the scale um, you can start giving dimensions to it how you will give it you can go to annotation and in annotation you can have different dimensions it's the same way as before in the 3d modeling you can give smart dimension if i click this and then you just choose the edges where you want to give dimension so click on the top click on the bottom and here you have the dimension now notice something if i click ok the dimension should be same as you have learned in engineering graphics so uh, external dimensions internal feature dimensions and many things this is saying 0 0.16 you can notice here my units are in meters so also in engineering drawing mode you need to first thing is to change your units to where you want it so in case i want it in millimeters i click on millimeters and the units will change to 160 so this edge is 160 now in the same way you can start giving dimension for the circles edges all the views which you like and here i also have different uh, options so uh, there is also automatic dimensioning feature available you can you can try that automatic dimensioning and you can also have different views which is uh, projected view auxiliary view section view or detail view it is the same as normal drafting commands i want you to explore them and give as much information about your part on this 2d drawing as possible and then once you are happy with dimensioning and arranging your views the last thing which I want you to do is to go to file, click on save as and again in the same folder where you have saved the practice part file. So it's in the SOLIDWORKS on my desktop and uh, SOLIDWORKS practice folder. I will make it practice box but in the, in the beginning I will write it DWG which is the drawing. So drawing practice box and click save. So if I go to my folder which is on my desktop i have two files now one is the model file which is the solidworks file and the other one is solidworks file and the other one is solidworks drawing file if you can see the type solidworks drawing and then this is solidworks part this is the two files which i want from you um, in your assignment uh, so which is due next week um, uh, the stop river.